Okay, just while we get these slides going, um, I'm going to rattle through the next 15 minutes. So I want everyone here to just relax, um, take in the story that I've created to help tell this little landing page lesson. And uh, I've actually pre-scheduled uh, the article that is derived from this whole talk to go live in exactly 15 minutes. And it's going to go live at robhope.com forward slash WCEU, which I'm going to put on the board in two seconds. There it is. Cool. Cool. That's the link. So just first off, okay, be honest. Who doesn't know what a landing page is? Yeah. Thank you. The world needs more of you. You couple down there. So a landing page is where we land up after our marketing efforts. Okay, so imagine you're on Instagram stories doing your daily stalk and there comes the Instagram story promotion and it says swipe up to win the trip of a lifetime and this is a Coca-Cola competition. You arrive at the competition landing page and not the Coca-Cola home page. So that's your landing page. And it's worth noting that a really good landing page has just one objective. And in this case, it's inputting your email, hitting that enter button, and bam, that's what we call a conversion. See, the beauty of a landing page is the effectiveness to actually get the user to do just one thing. So in this talk, I'm going to tell you a little story about how when we understand what the user is thinking and anticipate what you would like to see in the landing page, we can really optimize for conversions. OK, so this is Yannick. Yannick is a millennial hipster. How do I know he's a millennial? He was born in 1990. How do I know he's a hipster? He only drinks pour over coffee. <laughs> no other coffee is good enough. But it's not all good times for Yannick because he runs out of his beloved Chemex coffee filters each month, okay? And because he lives in the small town of Witzenhausen, which is about 115 kilometers from nearest city, Hanover, he has no big coffee shops near him to replenish his stock. So what, is, <laughs> what does any young and ambitious millennial do at this point? He, he hops online and he orders them, right? Right? No. He goes on Twitter and he tweets, ran out of Chemex filters, hashtag FML. <laughs> <laughs> then he heads to Google and he searches Chemex coffee filters. And because our marketing team's on the ball, we've actually got a Google Ads campaign that's excluding major German cities. And our ad says, struggling to get comics, Chemex coffee filters out in the country? We deliver anywhere in Germany when you start a coffee filter subscription, free delivery. So at this point, Yannick is thinking, whoa, that's me. You know, I live in the country. And he clicks the ad, and he arrives at our landing page. So again, like I said in the beginning, good landing page is one objective. And in this case, it is for Yannick to start a coffee filter subscription to get delivered every month. That's a successful conversion. OK, so I could say 50 things you should do and shouldn't do about a landing page, but we need to step back. And there's always one macro task at hand, is what would 29-year-old Yannick with a gorgeous beard want to see in his page to be persuaded to use his credit card and actually subscribe? So a first step is always intro copy resonates with the user problem. A lot of you don't know, but I've reviewed over 7,000 landing pages in the last 10 years, and you'll be blown away with what I see every day. Can you imagine the conversion difference between this intro that says the leading supply of coffee goods with some awesome beans in a shop now versus a relative running out of Chemex coffee filters, get 100 delivered every month for 12 euro, and the actual filters next door, and the actionable call to action button that says start a subscription. Yannick's thinking, Whoa, this is exactly what I want, but we know it's 2019, and it's just not enough for conversion. 
You know, Yannick's got questions. So, second point is that we construct the rest of our content based on doubts that Yannick could have. So this would be a great interactive exercise. You know, we could go around, but I'm just gonna rattle through them. What do you think at this point? What would Yannick want to learn about? What doubts does he have? So first off is always probably gonna be, how can I play? Is payment safe? So we add credit card logos to the bottom and the website footer, standard stuff. Secondly, how many filters? We said it in the beginning, but we acknowledge that, you know, Yannick skims content. So there's 90% of everyone out there. So our most common questions, we use bigger type. We have visuals, so we slap on a badge that says 100 coffee filters. Next one, he's probably thinking, ah, oh, but maybe there aren't the coffee filters I like. So we put a minimal but super clear image gallery strip within our landing page of the exact filters. Secondly, very important one. Maybe it's a subscription, you know, but maybe they've got these, you know, difficult policies. So right there where the subscription button is, we add a little subtext that says pause or cancel the subscription at any time. This is exactly what he'd want to read at this point. That's the doubt he's got. And because subscriptions can be quite sticky, we appreciate that he probably wants to read a, a little bit more. So we add a learn more button that smooth scrolls down to an FAQ section in the landing page. And in that section, we've got another bit that talks about is there plastic packaging? Just an FAQ, because you know, Yannick, he cares, and he's actually very fond of baby turtles, and he doesn't want to support plastic packaging in the future. So we've now answered many doubts, but we want to strengthen our page and make it a little bit more convincing. So step number three is build trust with testimonials. And you must never underestimate the power of a quality testimonial from an opinion leader within your industry. So I'm gonna to step to the side quick, and just for all the designers out there, imagine looking for an icon pack and arriving at a landing page that was promoting an icon pack called Zen Icons. And you're scrolling through the preview of all the icons, and bang, in the middle is this testimonial from the Spotify product designer saying, with nine different weights, these are my go-to icons for all my side projects. How's that validation? You know, half your doubts are now out the window. You're like, where can I get them? How can I pay? So stepping back to Yannick, where he's thinking about coffee filters and delivery and so on, this is a bad testimonial. You know, it's anonymous, it's got no value. But for Yannick, he'd want to see a, a testimonial by a real person. Look, another bearded guy, some coffee stuff in the background. His name's Gunter Dedekind. And what a good testimonial does is it actually highlights a feature. And in this feature, he's saying, deliver straight to my door every month. That's, a, that's another thing he was thinking. And a great testimonial is by someone that you can relate to. And he's saying, wow, this dude's also from Nuremberg. It's also a small town. And then a great testimonial also, it doesn't only highlight a feature, but it also answers a doubt. And again, from our FAQ, Remember, he loves the turtles, and he sees this, this guy also appreciates the plastic packaging. So he's like, wow, that is super convincing. So Yannick's reaching for his credit card out of his pocket. I'm kidding, he's probably wearing a fanny pack, and he's <laughs> sitting there. He's reaching for it, but it's restless, you know? Tension spans, dust. He's actually wondering if anyone liked that tweet from earlier. He's about to leave. So what we do at this point is we need to be strategic and we create haste. And this is a, a marked as pretty much it's the biggest nightmare is that you can answer all the doubts in a, in a landing page, but the biggest one out there is, can I get this product or service somewhere else for cheaper? So how do we do this? And the answer is we need to up the perceived value of our product and add a limit to it. So let's go through some examples quickly. We've got a pricing table. Discount only valid for the month of June. We've got a, a bowl of gin we're selling, but there's only three left. And in our case, I've strategically placed a countdown timer just above the call to action button that says, if you order in the next 12 hours, you get a bag of awesome Arabian mountain beans. <laughs> Yannick's thinking, wow, those Arabian beans are legit. And he takes his mom's credit card out of his fanny pack, 
enters in the details, and bam, we have a conversion. So I just want to recap for the naughty kids at the back, <laughs> South Africans at the back, that we started by trying to understand who our user was. We tried to anticipate exactly what you'd want to see in that landing page, and then we added our content. We started by adding intro copy that resonates with the problem. Then we added content to answer all the doubts. We strengthened it with a few testimonials by real people highlighting features and answering doubts. And in the end, we strategically added some haste to get them going, to get them excited, get them emotional, and to get that conversion. So yeah, this whole article is live right now at robhope.com forward slash WCEU. I'm Rob Hope on Twitter. If you want to chat to me about landing pages, I've been doing it for 10 years. I love talking about it, so please feel free to do it. Um, and I'm Rob underscore Hope on Instagram if you want to use the great filters. <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening to the talk. Awesome, man. That was awesome. Cool, man. Awesome. I hope I never meet these landing pages, one of them in the dark, because they're going to eat me alive. Ah. Thank you so much. Cool. Okay, that way. Um, oh, yeah, I'm going to pick up the clicker, and you wait for me for your speaker gift.